if you want to get better at drawing, you need to spend some time practicing certain skills. And unfortunately, there are no magic tricks or shortcuts. There's no three things you need to know to instantly improve your drawing. There's just practice and patience. But it does help to know what to practice. And to be able to draw realistically, one of the skills you need to have is controlled shading. I've got three simple shading exercises to test how good you are at shading. Now, if you try these exercises and you can't do them easily, it's really worth practicing them regularly because the reality is if you can't achieve these three basic exercises, you're not going to be able to get a really good result when you're shading anything else. The three exercises we'll do are shading smooth light values, shading smooth dark values, and shading smooth transitional values. Let's give them a go. I'm using a 3B pencil, just so you can see it on the screen. I'd recommend using a 2B pencil or an HB pencil, something that you can use for both light and dark shading. First thing we're going to test out is how good we are at shading light. And I'm just going to draw a blobby kind of shape. And then we're going to shade this in with one light, even tonal value. And the key here is to use the side of the pencil lead. If you're shading like this or holding your pencil like this, it's going to be very hard to get nice smooth shading marks. We need to access as much of that lead as we can. So I'm holding my pencil at the back and trying to use as little pressure as possible to shade in this shape. And I'm sort of just moving my way around, shading a little bit and then moving across and shading a little bit using a back and forth motion. If you're pretty comfortable with shading and you've got good rhythm, you might be able to just shade back and forth in long strokes like this, nice even strokes. The key here is to change the pressure of your pencil if you're coming back to an area that you've already shaded. So if I shade over top of this with the same pressure, I'm going to get a darker value. But I can shade over top of it with a much lighter pressure just to fill in some of the gaps. If there's any little white gaps around the edge, then have a go at filling those in again with the same tonal value. And we're trying to do this without using any smudging tools or blending tools, but once you've done it, once you've achieved it with pencil, then you could go ahead and maybe rub across it with a tissue or even use an old paintbrush. Just filling in any little gaps, trying to get it as even as possible. So that's the light shading. I know it's a little bit hard to see. This one you'll be able to see much more easily. So this time we're going to do the same, but we're going to use dark shading. Test how well you can shade an even layer of dark tonal value. So this time I'm going to have a little bit more pressure on the pencil, but I still want to access the side of the pencil lead here, not just the tip of the pencil lead. But it means I might hold my pencil a little bit closer to the end, still keeping it on an angle. And we do want a little bit of pressure for this darker one. What we're trying to achieve here is one even tonal value. It's not lighter, it's not darker. And sometimes that might mean going back over a few little bits. If you've missed them, or you know, you've left gaps, or maybe it's just a little bit lighter than what you're wanting. Again, if you've got good control, you might be able to do back and forth motions all the way across the shape. But when we're shading a darker tonal value, we also want the shading to be quite dense and the marks to be really close together. You might find that using a slightly circular motion with your pencil is going to help create an even shading mark. The smaller the marks that you make with your pencil, the more control you have, but you may get a few little uneven patches where you end up going over an area you've already shaded and you're doubling up on the value then. Now I'm just evening out any little patches that aren't the same value. And I'm having to change the pressure of my pencil depending on how much darker I want these areas that I'm filling in to be. The texture of your paper is going to make a big difference. This is quite a smooth paper, but you can see a bit of texture in it. If you have a much more textured paper, it's, it's a lot more forgiving 
it's going to even out your marks a little bit more. If you've gone over the edges, you can just tidy that up with your putty eraser. So these should only take two to five minutes each. A nice even layer of light shading and a nice even layer of dark shading. I've got a piece of tissue here and I've also got an old paintbrush and either of these would be good for just blending out your shading marks once you've got a nice even cover. But of course, the test of your skill is whether you can first get an even cover just using your pencil. To smooth the shading with a brush, I'm just using very light circular motions with the tip of the brush. To use a tissue, I just put it underneath my finger and very lightly rub over the surface. I quite like using a brush when it's an odd shape like this, but if you don't have a brush, then just use a piece of tissue. I've got one more shading technique to test your skills, and that is shading smooth transitional values. But just before we move on, if you're finding these exercises helpful or challenging or illuminating, please do me a huge favor right now and like this video and subscribe to this channel so I can keep making you more videos like this one. So transitional shading is shading that flows smoothly from light to dark values with no obvious dividing line between the values. And this is going to take a little bit of practice. Give yourself five to 10 minutes for this one and see what you can achieve. I'm going to cover all of this shape with light tonal value. Fill in any of the gaps around the edge, controlling the pressure of your pencil to match the tonal value. And I'm just going to do one more layer over that to even it out a little bit. Now I'm going to build up some darker shading around the edge. And once I've put some of that in, I'm going to transition from the dark to the light areas. So you can see that I've got a very clear divide between the light shading and the dark shading. I want to transition this darker shading into the light shading so you can't tell where it starts and stops. And to do that, I'm going to start on the light side of the divide. And I'm going to add a value that is between the light and the dark. And as I do that, I'm moving my pencil back and forward, changing the pressure to match the tonal value. I'm working over that line. So as I come in towards the light area, really taking the pressure off my pencil, hardly touching the paper. And I might have to do that a couple of times. I think of this as a sort of a feathering technique. You're feathering back and forth between the light and the dark, matching the tonal values of each and then releasing the pressure as you move towards the lighter area. What you don't want to have is a dark and then a middle and then a light with strong divides between them. So if you find that you do end up with very distinct tonal values, you've got to keep working over that line between them with very little pressure working your way into the lighter area. And I'm using small circles. You're going to spend about five minutes, maybe even more, five to 10 minutes on this one, testing out the control you have over the pressure of your pencil and where you put the light and dark values. At the moment, I can still see a strong divide between the dark and this middle value. The middle to the light is pretty good. I need to work over this divide, blend it up. And I'm going to work my way all around the edge so the edges are darker and the center is lighter. And it should start to create a 3D optical illusion so that you get the sense that this shape has sides and the light is reflecting off the top of it. You can increase the optical illusion by adding more contrast and blend that into the existing shading. Once you're happy that you've achieved a nice smooth transition from the dark to the light values using only a pencil, then you might like to go through and just very gently 
blend your shading marks, making sure that you don't take dark graphite into the center. So start from the lighter area and move towards the darker area. If you found these exercises really easy, then that is fantastic and your shading skills are top notch. But maybe you can spot a few areas where you need to improve. Did you have any trouble shading really light values? Did you struggle to get a nice smooth and even layer of shading for each exercise? Do you find it difficult to create transitional shading that flows smoothly from light to dark? If you had any trouble, then keep watching and I'll show you what you need to focus on to improve your shading for each exercise. The key to achieving light shading is using very light pressure with your pencil. I'm using a 3B pencil and I can still get very light tonal values. And that's because I'm only resting the pencil on the paper. I'm not pushing down with any kind of force. So hold your pencil a little bit further back than normal. Maybe right back, if you can have this end of the pencil sort of tucked inside your hand, then you can almost get your pencil parallel to the paper. There's very little space between the pencil and the paper. And that means that we're accessing the side of the pencil lead rather than the tip. If this feels too awkward, you can hold it like normal, but you're going to try and get as much of the side touching the paper as you can. And think about the pencil only just resting on the paper, not pushing down. You can move back and forward and along at the same time, and then you can go back over your marks, again with very light pressure, just to fill in some of those gaps. You can also practice controlling the spacing between your marks. So if you ended up with something that looks like this, with lots of white gaps in between, then focus on the back and forth with control and only moving it slightly across. So I'm keeping my marks close enough together that I have very few white spaces in between them. When you combine the light pressure with the marks that are close together, you're going to get nice, smooth, even shading. And the more you practice this, the better you're going to get, the faster you're going to be able to do it. Sometimes it's actually a little bit easier when you go faster, but you get into a rhythm. If you had a problem with the dark shading, and getting a nice even tonal value, there are a couple of things you can practice. The first one is similar to this one here, controlling the spacing between your marks. I'm holding the pencil just a little bit further back than normal. I still want to be able to get some force down on the paper because I want to get a nice dark value. I'm going to move back and forward away from my first mark, but I'm going to try and keep those marks close together. And the second thing you can practice for dark even shading is using a different kind of movement. So if you find that when you're shading like this, you're getting gaps in between it or your lines go a little bit wonky, then try using a circular motion. It's kind of like a long oval that I'm using. And I'm putting down a couple of ovals and then I'm moving slightly downwards and then moving slightly over to the right and then moving up. And you can double back over what you've done to even it out a little bit. If you struggled with the smooth transitional shading, here's a couple of things you can practice. This is all about controlling the pressure of your pencil from light to dark. So these two exercises are actually going to help you achieve light and dark values. But you also want to learn how to change the pressure of your pencil as you're shading. So as you're moving from dark to light, you're going to be lessening the pressure on your pencil. And we can create some shading scales which exercise that control. Starting dark moving along and as you move you're going to slowly lessen the pressure trying to keep your pencil marks close together we can try one from light to dark as light as you possibly can and increasing the pressure this is a really good test of where you might be struggling so you can see that i've got quite a sharp change between the light and the dark, so there's something going on there that I might need to practice. And you can also go from light to dark to light to dark. 
each time you're trying to get a nice smooth transition from dark to light or light to dark. And one more exercise you can practice for transitional shading is to just shade a light patch nice and even. And instead of changing the pressure of your pencil, like in these scales, this time you're going to build up layers over top of your first layer. Each time you're starting at the darker end, as you move from the dark to the light side, you're going to lessen the pressure so that your shading fades away into the layer beneath. Let's try that again. A nice, smooth layer of shading. Choose one side to start from, this is going to be the darker side, and we're going to transition our shading through to light. So starting dark, and lessening the pressure as you move towards the light side, and then repeating that several times. I'm not going quite as far in the second and the third times. Keep practicing these shading techniques until you can achieve smooth, even light shading, smooth, even dark shading, and smooth transitional shading. I hope you enjoyed practicing your shading skills. Testing yourself with exercises like these ones can help identify what you might need to work on to get better at drawing. And you can make these short shading exercises a part of your regular practice Eventually you find them easy and that's going to transfer over into your drawings. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.